We should be live. We're back here again at Buffalo Trace Distillery for another episode of Whiskey Wednesday. <laughs> I am joined once again by Bourbon Hall of Famer, Mr. Freddie Johnson. Freddie, tell us what we're getting into today. I'll tell you what, Alan, we're in for some fun today. We are going to talk about Freddie's sodas today. So we're going to make a couple of cocktails and we're going to make that traditional root beer float at the end. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how the pieces fit together and uh, hopefully, hopefully, Folks will try these at home. I think a little, a little blurb went out that says, come up with some cool cocktails made from Freddy's sodas. And uh, I think, what, we, we're going to have a winner? Don't we have a, somebody's going to, is this I, like a little contest or something? I, Who can make the best cocktail or I think people kind? are going to need to check that, uh, check that description in the caption to learn how they can enter to win. Yeah, that's exactly right. All righty. Well, I'll tell you what, a little bit about these products. So... The basis of Freddy's Sodas uh, has to do with uh, a little bit of history associated with Buffalo Trace, but also about the, um, kind of like the mindset of Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace is a family-based distillery. So normally when you come to a distillery and you do a, do a tour and a tasting, uh, you get to taste the distilled spirits products. But if you're less than 21, or if you're a historian and prefer not to have any alcohol, uh, at a lot of the locations you go to, you're left high and dry. But not at Buffalo Trace. Because here, you get a chance to have the Freddy's Root Beer. Okay, so that goes complimentary with all of the tastings. The tastings and the tours are complimentary. But let's get into these profiles here, Alan, and let's see what we've got today. All right. Okay. What are we starting off with? I think we should start off, well, here's a cool one for you to remember. If you are making cocktails, um, you always want to start with your clear liquids first and your softer products. And what we're going to do is we're going to have some fun with this one. This one is just a traditional, if you want to call it that. So it's a buffalo and ginger. Okay, kind of like, you know, you hear people talk, talk about, I'll take a bourbon and ginger on the rocks. Well, let's see, what does that really mean? Well, it's a very simple drink to make. So all you need, ice. Now we're gonna use these cups, which is really kind of cool. So these are what we call mule cups, all right? So we're gonna take some ice. And Freddie, while you're pouring that, I know people are gonna be asking, can people get that at the gift shop, that mug? I'll take, yes, they can. Anytime you see that buffalo on, the, on anything that we have, you can get it in the gift shop or you can go online and pick it up, okay? Now, you can't, uh, the alcohol is still pending right now, but uh, everything else, uh, even the sodas, you can get awesome. online. Okay, now, so, got us some ice. For this one, it's so simple to make. Whenever you're making a drink, what you want to do is this. You always start with your base, okay? Let's get this little sucker opened up here, and I think we're going to make it easier. Yeah, we'll do it this way. Freddie, while you're doing that, what's the, uh, what's the difference between ginger ale and ginger beer? That's an excellent question. So ginger ale is uh, actually made with real cane sugar, uh, the, uh, the ginger uh, is imported in, and uh, it's really kind of, uh, it's really kind of an, an unusual spicy, uh, kind of sweet, but um, back in the day, a uh, ginger ale and uh, the ginger was used just like we use the alcohol for medicinal purposes. It was actually used to calm the stomach. So to make this particular one, okay, so your buffalo and ginger, we're going to use the ginger ale. Now, this is very important. Okay, basically you just kind of double them up. So for this one, we're using about it. You can use two ounces. If you want to do a two to four, you can do a two to four and make a really strong cocktail. Um, I always tell folks, uh, look at who you're making it for. So the objective is just to make something that's going to be fun and enjoyable. Oh, I love that sound. Okay. So ready for this, that, and you can kind of do a couple of things. So some people like to use the measuring. I like to do it based on how it looks, okay, when I do the bubbles. So if I've got a newbie and I'm doing this, 
With this, can, with the mule mug, you can hardly see it. But uh, if you can, can you zoom down here and you pick up on that, Alan? Try to lean in a little bit. So here's your heads up when you're making a drink for someone. You're making a cocktail with a carbonated beverage. The smaller the bubbles when you pour it in, the higher the concentration of alcohol. So when you pour it in, you want to make a nice, smooth, enjoyable drink. You do it until you start to get some pretty big bubbles. And that tells you that that's going to be a pretty enjoyable drink for someone to relax and enjoy. So just that easily. Ginger ale, Buffalo Trace, ice, and a darn good drink. That looks, so. that looks really great today. It's a beautiful day outside. It's wonderful. It is wonderful for sitting out today, this afternoon. You get back home from work or you're, you're, still, <laughs> you're still quarantined and you want to get outside for a little bit. Buffalo and ginger is an excellent way to go. Uh, Elmer was a fan of Buffalo Trace bourbon and ginger. So the ginger ale, that was his, one of his favorite drinks right there that we've just made. Next one up, this one's kind of cool. So we're calling this one the Freddy's Mule. Now why are we doing this? And why did we do it in this order is because the ginger beer a little bit more concentrated on the ginger. So it's going to be a little bit spicier to the nose. Um, it actually has a uh, fruit flavor to it, so it's got a little bit of a citric kind of a fruity flavor to it. Um, but because of the additional carbonation, when you nose it, it just kind of bubbles up to the nose. So let me give you a little quick idea of this one. Love these sounds. So by design, by design, if you do this, can you see that? Okay, see the bubbles now when you nose it? Oh, you want to have some fun? Here's a fun thing that you can do with these. Take that ginger ale. People ask a lot of times, well, what's the difference? Like you were talking about earlier, you know, Alan, about what's the difference between ginger ale and ginger yeah. beer? Get a little bit of both. So get a, you know, get you some ginger ale, some Freddy's ginger ale, get you some Freddy's ginger beer. And the first thing you notice is the color, and that's oh. because of the fruit, okay, the additives. All right, but when you nose them, you can nose the difference between them. And look at the difference in the bubbles. Remember I was talking about the bubbles? So now look at, this one's a little bit more concentrated with flavors and stuff. So ginger beer, believe it or not, is designed, uh, the way the ingredients are put in there, they're designed to make that frothy head like you see on beer. It's designed to do that. So when you make a cocktail with it, you're gonna get that nice little head like you would get on a real good beer but there's no alcohol involved, okay? And the other cool part about it, these are called clean labels. So when you look at the label, you're gonna notice it's made with uh, all natural products, uh, real cane sugar, and uh, there are no uh, artificial additives associated with it at all, and no caffeine. So you don't have to worry about taking it to the next level there. But if you nose it, it's amazing. I like to do this when I'm playing around with my drinks. Take a little sip of the ginger ale Got that? Now watch how, the, watch how the palate reacts. Now, take a sip of your ginger beer. Boom. It explodes. So you get all these additional flavors, but it's such a nice balance. It's like a, a, a sweet and sour drink. So you get the sweetness, but also you get the spiciness. And it's just a really wonderful combination for making an excellent cocktail. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna try the same thing again. And this time, Alan, we're gonna make ourselves a Freddy's Mule. What we're gonna do, got that ice. We're gonna take this vodka, and this is not just any vodka. You know this is Wheatley's vodka, okay? So it is uh, redistilled 10 times. This is a premium vodka. Most people don't even realize this. Now, redistilled 10 times. The dominant grain in this product, okay? It's a combination. So it's wheat and a priority, uh, priority mix of 
other grains. The cool part, Alan, is for this one, redistilled seven times separately, the two batches, seven times separately. Then he combines them together, does a triple distillation and a triple filtration. It has already taken double gold twice at the International Spirits Tasting. And the cool part is by multiple distillations, what you get is you get a very smooth finish to the product uh, without a lot of the harshness. And it goes excellent with what we're about to do. So let's try this combo again. So the normal com combination that you want to do for a true Freddy's Mule, you want two ounces of the Wheatley Vodka. Why am I pouring less? It's because Freddy's got to get home after this is over. <laughs> okay, now, so we've got the Wheatley Vodka. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that ginger beer. Remember what we were talking about with the bubbles? Now, if you wanted to do a double up, so this is all you'd have to do to do that. I prefer doing it, and I can show you when you pour it. Let's see if it'll show it. Can you see? Look at that. It's almost wow. like a root beer float. See how it comes up? So it's got it. Now you see the head on it? So that's an indication of a real good ginger beer when you see that. Right? Now, so we're going to double up on that for you. If maybe you don't uh, have some vodka on hand, but you have some, some Buffalo Trace, the bourbon goes really well with that ginger beer too, doesn't it? Oh, my goodness gracious, yeah. So, um, and that's an excellent, excellent uh, opportunity to have some fun with this one. Um, I play around with these all the time to see which one do I like best. So I take the different Buffalo Trace products and I will mix them with the ginger ale and the ginger beer. I'll look at different dilutions, different percentages, and you will be amazed at the flavors that will come to the forefront depending upon what you're mixing it with. So excellent, excellent cocktail. For this particular one, you do that, you swirl it around. Oh man, the nose is entirely different. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm ready to place a bet on number seven in the fifth. <laughs> All right. So pretty cool. So easy to make. So easy to make. You can continue to have a conversation with your friends while you're doing these. Um, for me, the link back on these particular sodas and the way that they're set up is it just brings me back to when I used to have fun. It started off with the root beer as a kid. But then what progressed was as I got older, I could have a drink with my dad. And uh, all of a sudden I realized I was capturing something. I was capturing memories that I never thought would be significant in my life until now. So here we are, the ultimate. This is the cat's meow and a dessert for friends and family. And uh, you can start off with your kids because you can start off with just a plain root beer float. But here at Buffalo Trace, you take a tour with us. You come in off the tour, we're going to taste the Buffalo Trace, we're going to taste a couple of other products here. The cool part about what we're doing now is we surprise you. We vary the different products that you'll be tasting at the end of your tour. So it's not the same product every time, uh, but we've got, uh, we got a select number and we do that with you. So you get a chance to appreciate uh, different recipes and different taste profiles to the product. What we're going to play with this go round is one of my favorites. And that's the Freddy's Root Beer made, you ready for this one? Oh, yes. It's made with real oil of birch, okay? Uh, the uh, vanilla is imported, okay? It's really kind of cool. Real cane sugar, no caffeine, and no alcohol. So just because this is a ginger beer and a root beer, there's no alcohol. The kids love it. Uh, I, I did a test trial with my, with my grandkids it was a blast okay so they are their favorites of this but the root beer float is the top of the line for them so what we're going to do today is if you notice take this root beer pretty darn cool uh, hey daddy yo you know <laughs> what right. is the uh, i know we've covered this last time we did um, the root beer but it's been a while what's the where does the hey daddy yo come from it's something that my dad used to do my dad used to uh uh, his, his comment was, uh, you may not remember a person's name, but they always remember how you made them feel when you greet them. 
So the hey daddy-o um, is just an expression he would use when he would run into people that he, he uh, maybe he had met them a long time ago, they still remembered him, uh, but he would always say, hey daddy-o, how you doing today? And it was just a warm, friendly greeting that immediately made, made, you, feel, made, made you feel like that you were, you know, back at home again having fun. So it's, it's a fun thing, um, but try it. So like I say, people remember how you made them feel, okay? They may not remember everything, but they remember how you made them feel. So now, do you notice this? Look, see, I like to do things like this. So now you can see, compare the difference in the bubbles. Isn't that something? So there's your ginger beer, okay? Okay, it'll still bubble up there. The root beer, noticed a lot more carbonation to it. Okay, so this tells you that this one is going to be pretty good on the nose. Oh yeah, you can smell the olive birch. And the reason that you want to do that in this order is because the olive birch is going to coat the inside of your mouth. Okay, very gently. And that's how you tell you've got a good root beer, is you get that residual lingering just like a good bourbon it lingers on the palate and you continue to get those subtle flavors okay now you ready for this okay i mean when i was a kid i mean we used to do these all the time the the, the name of the game was the messier the the messier the root beer float you made the better off it was but here's what we're going to do for today i'm going to show you a little trick when you're making a cocktail like this so when you're doing this Normally what you would do is you would take your bourbon cream. Now the bourbon cream is a real dairy product. No artificial flavors. Uh, it's a natural dairy product. And we take Buffalo Trace bourbon to the dairy, infuse it into the cream. We make this shelf life just like this, believe it or not, two years, okay? Open it up. We suggest putting it in the fridge, okay? It's still good for six months in the fridge. Now watch this little neat trick. So there's your bourbon cream, okay? You're gonna add your root beer to it. And the reason that you do it this way is it mixes naturally, okay? So a lot of people, when I mention this, a lot of people say, oh, well, I'll try it the other way. And when they do, they will see exactly what happens. So all the carbonation stuff gets in there and it basically causes everything to separate. But you want something like this. Look at that, how beautiful it is. Okay, you nose it, unbelievably soft to the nose. Take a swig. Oh my, I promise you, I promise you. You can make this with friends and family. People that say, oh, I don't even like bourbon. You make this drink for them, they'll love you forever. Okay, it's unbelievably good. But that's just the root beer and the bourbon cream. Now we're going to take it to the next level. All right. We're going to make ourselves a root beer float. Okay. So this time, I'm like a mad scientist sometimes, so you have to check this out. So we'll get these out of the way here. Drop these down here. Now, kids love these, okay? I'm just kind of crazy about this kind of stuff. So what you want to do is you get your ice cream. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, a couple of big old. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Okay. You know Fred is about to make a mess, don't you? You know that. Okay. So we get that ice cream down in there. All right. Now, watch this. We got our ice cream. I'll throw another scoop in there. I'm going to be consuming this in a moment, so I want to make sure I have a good one. All right. Now. Since we know this might get a little messy. This is a fun one to do with your kids. Uh, we used to do this all the time when I'd go fishing and hunting. We'd have uh, Sunday dinners and stuff like that. And one of the cool things we would do is we'd do this. You got your root beer. You're going to add, remember how you do this, okay? You're going to add your bourbon cream first, okay? And for this one, I just tell folks you can use like about two ounces. Put a couple ounces in there like that. You're going to be amazed. Uh, it doesn't you know you don't have to swamp it and then you're going to throw that root beer in on top and that gives the root beer a chance to do this 
You know, the last time I did this, I, it spewed all out over the side. So, so that means but, it's a good one, right? Ah, uh, that's a good one. That's a good <laughs> one. So, all right, so you do that. Okay, and then you say, oh, well, Freddie, can you take it to the next level? Well, sure you can, all right? So you can add some cream to it. Oh, yes. Oh, Freddie, can we go any better? Yes, we can, because we can throw a stemmed cherry on top. And when we do that, that's when we have friends and family. Okay, so let's see if we get one of these little suckers out that's, of there. That's perfect, because I think uh, Scott Pfizer on Facebook was asking any recommenda recommendations for the rim of the glass. So it looks like you're, you're showing us how to, how to top the Freddie's float off. Now, and if you really want to have some fun with it, you can get some cinnamon uh, or nutmeg and sprinkle on top. And look at that. Look at that. Oh, yes. Are you ready? It's so delicious. Uh, let me test this to make sure it's okay for everybody. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. Wow. Mmm. So there are some folks, um, we've had some mixologists that have made uh, some of these. We've had some folks that have set these up. And what they do is, believe it or not, they actually toast the cinnamon uh, as it goes on to the whipped cream. Um, unbelievably good. Um, I suggest that you get uh, this weekend, get you some Freddy's Root Beer, get you some of these others, the ginger beer, the ginger ale, Invite some friends over and just kick back and talk about this whole COVID disaster and uh, make a memory with friends and family. That's great. And uh, we just had a big group walk past us. So the gift shop is open if you wanted to come grab some, right? But if, if you're not local, where, where can you get it? Oh, I'll tell you what, they do both. It's really amazing. So we have people that come by and just get the root beer by the case. They're passing through or they have friends that are coming through and they'll get it by the case, uh, the ginger beer, the ginger ale, and, uh, uh, and the root beer. The deal is this, you can go online. You go to buffalotracegiftshop.com you can order it. And I've had people to send me pictures of when their, uh, when their uh, delivery arrives. And believe it or not, believe it or not, it's a beautiful presentation. So if you wanted to go do a gift for someone, that's an excellent gift that you can ship to them from Buffalo Trace uh, without having to worry about the alcohol or any of those other issues. Um, but I hope, I hope that uh, for this Whiskey Wednesday, even though we didn't really talk much about the whiskey, hopefully you had some fun talking about the sodas and the ginger ales. And I suggest that you make a memory with friends and family. Awesome. Well, it looks like we have a, our first live studio audience. I think we can, uh, we can wrap it up here. Thanks again, Freddie, for uh, taking the time out. I know you're a busy guy. Um, mm -hmm. Once again, guys, if you want to get some Freddies, keep an eye out at your local stores or pop by the gift shop or go online. All right. Thanks, Freddie. And we have one other thought for you. Oh, okay. Part of what most people don't realize, this is not Freddie's uh, windfall. <laughs> so what we do is the agreement with the Buffalo Trace Distillery is, do you know that part of the proceeds from the Freddie Soda goes to a cemetery, a historical cemetery, so National Historic Cemetery here in Frankfort, Kentucky called the Green Hill Cemetery, where a lot of Civil War soldiers are buried. Um, so part of my family is buried there also. And so it's my way of giving back um, to the community. The Frankfurt Parks and uh, Recreation Group have also partnered with us. And it's Buffalo Trace and Freddie's way of saying uh, thanks for being part of this community. So uh, look forward to it and uh, come see me sometimes and maybe we can take a tour.